Good afternoon, viewers. We say we want to welcome you to the Heaven Delight World Outreach Fellowship, 150 Cooper Street, All Boys Town, Bible Study. And so we trust that even as we teach on, the th on this evening, that your hearts will be blessed, that this word will bring transformation to lives, and it will bring, cause us to experience the greater presence of God in our lives. As I now hand over to our sister, Allen, who would open us in a word of prayer. Hallelujah, glory to God. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the opportunity that we, O oh Lord God, can come into the presence, the Holy Spirit presence. Because, Lord God, we pray for the enablement of the Holy Spirit to deliver your word, to deliver your truth. And as we teach on this topic this afternoon, we pray that you would bless your people, that you would touch their hearts, enlightenment, bring transformation in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And so just a little introduction on the topic that we will be teaching on this evening. Uh, the topic is Jehovah Shammah. And so we see throughout scripture, God is called by many names, each representing a specific characteristic, attribute, or trait of who the Lord is. Today we are exploring his name, Jehovah Shammah. The survey of the title Jehovah Shammah is a biblical theology of the presence of God with his people. Jehovah Shammah, the meaning is the Lord is there. And the Hebrew context or the Hebrew word for that is Yahweh Sama. It is a name given to the city in Ezekiel's vision. It is mentioned only once in the Old Testament. Ezekiel chapter 48 and verse 35, the city's name from that day and ever after shall be the Lord is there. Let's read. The context in which the name Jehovah Shammah was mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, um, it was taken in that he was speaking out of Israel's darkest time he was encouraging a future glory, and he was capping it all off with the promise of God's presence. And so there's quite a lot to do with God's presence, even as Sister Allen will now take us into the theological aspect of this topic. Amen. Yeah. Ezekiel 48, can we read that? Verse 35. Verse 35, can we read it? Ezekiel do you have? Um, I don't have the entire. Okay, we will. Just continue yeah. with it. I want to read it. Because now the Lord is there. A vision by Ezekiel. Ezekiel, a prophet, saw a vision of the holy city of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the Lord took him in the spirit to show him the demarcation of the land, of the people, all the inheritance of the children of Israel. And there was a special place, a city demarcated for the Lord. And his temple is there, all in a vision that Ezekiel saw. And now, the word of the Lord came to him, and he declared in, in, verse 40, in verse 35 that the Lord, this city, this place where the Lord shall dwell, shall be called, the Lord is there. The Lord is there. Jehovah, Shama. Now, the Lord is there. And perhaps you might be wondering, what about that, the Lord is there? From the beginning, we know that the Lord is there and everywhere. We were taught that 
we must on this school journey. The Lord is everywhere. The Lord is present. He's present among his people. For so very many reasons he's present. So what is it special about this verse? The Lord is there, spoken by Ezekiel the prophet. E Ezekiel was a time, as we mentioned, was in the darkest times of the children of Israel. When for the children of Israel disobedient, God turned away from them. In fact, they, they, they were spread to other lands from their very land. They, they, were, they, were, they were aliens to their own land where they were. And therefore, God departed. God departed. But Ezekiel's prophecy that, that he spoke in Isaiah 48, bring up, it, it, it gives Israel hope. It gives Israel a promise of hope that even though God has departed from a city, from the temple, from their, from their presence, the hope is that God would be there. That city, God would be there. And it's a promise, it's a hope, it's a comfort to the children of Israel that, that God would be with them. He would be in their promise, even though he has departed from them and has caused the whole city, the whole temple to be destroyed and be invaded by, the, by, the, by nations, by their enemies and around them. Now I want to go to a particular scripture here in Romans, not Romans, in Zechariah 3, Zechariah 8, verse 3, as to show us there, as to show us this, the historical meaning and the historical event that would take place. This here is an historical event of an end time to come. The Lord is there. And it's an end time prophecy that relates to what Zechariah verse 3. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I was zealous for Zion with great jealousy for her with great fury. Thus said the Lord, I return unto Zion and will dwell amidst Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord, the host, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. This is, this speaks of the restoration of the divine presence again to Israel. So Zechariah, he declared that the Lord is there. I want to now I now want, now want to speak to you of Revelation chapter 21 as a further indication of what the Lord is there actually means to the people of Israel means in Zechariah prophecy the Lord is there Revelation, I want to go to Revelation 21, verse, verse 3, verse 3. It says here, I heard a voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall dwell with them, and be their God, and God shall and be their God. Verse, verse 2. I would go back up to verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them, 
and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This here is the prophecy that, that Zechariah meant. This is the promise. This is Zechariah's prophecy that was that I highlighted here in, not Zechariah, Ezekiel, sorry. Ezekiel's prophecy that I highlighted here in Zechariah 8, 3 and Revelation 21, verse 3, that speaks of the Lord is there. Very historical, an uh, end time event that is yet to be, that is yet to be fulfilled. And uh, even this is waiting to be fulfilled. We, the people of God, the church, they, the tabernacle that has not been made with hands, but the Lord said that we are his tabernacle. He has come and he has dwelled with us in the power of the Holy Ghost, all made possible by Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, who shed his blood and through him this restoration has taken place. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. So there we have it. Sister Allen giving us historical. The, the, the historical and theological aspect of the name Jehovah Shammah. And so we can establish that this prophecy finds its fulfillment in the church, in the Messiah, who is Emmanuel, God with us according to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14 and Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Therefore, we believe in God, our creator and redeemer, who for all time is zealously passionate above dwelling, about dwelling with his people, sorry. Above, while the above is both end time and present, we the people of God right now know of his presence with us. And so Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, is the representation of the heart of God towards his people. The city represents believers because the Lord has made his dwelling place with us. Jehovah Shammah implies that God always give hope in the darkest of time to keep his people going. And the truth of, of in the, the truth in terms of God is there when we look at it from the perspective of the Old Testament, we see in the beginning, according to Genesis chapter 3, that God was present even in the beginning. And so Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 talks about God himself walking in the cool of the day, having fellowship with Adam and Eve. And so even after the fall of man, Jehovah Shammah continues to be there for his people. And in Exodus chapter 33, verse 14, is, we see in the latter part of that, we see that his pres he promised that his presence will go with the people of Israel and he will give them rest. And so we see even the presence of God was with the children of Israel in a visible sense. And we saw that the presence of God in the visible sense on Mount Sinai, according to Exodus chapter 19, verse 6 to 20. And we know the story when the earthquake and the thundering and the lightning and the children of Israel were very fearful when the presence of God was visible on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. We also saw that presence in the, um, the pillar of cloud and the fire, uh, a fire by day and a pillar of cloud by night with the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 13, verse 20 and 22. And so even in the tabernacle that Moses had built, the presence of God came down there in that form of the cloud and even in the temple. So that was the visible presence of God. And so Deuter coming down to Deuteronomy, 
we see a pattern that God has never left his people um, alone, but his presence was always there. And so we can establish that God's desire, even from the beginning, was to have fellowship with man, was to be there, his presence, to dwell with man. And so Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 6, we also see the Jehovah Shammah, reminds the children of Israel of his presence with them and that he would never leave them nor forsake them even when they would have had their challenges. And we continue to see that even though God's presence were with the children of Israel, from Genesis, it, the presence of God, meaning Jehovah Shammah, the Lord was there, it was only mentioned or it was mentioned first in Ezekiel, first and the only time in Ezekiel chapter 48 and verse 35. So Jehovah Shammah continues to be with his people. And when we look at the, in the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, we know that Joshua was reminded, have I not commanded you? Be strong, be courageous. And so he was promising his people help and that he would uphold them with his righteous right arm in the book of Joshua. In the book of Psalms, chapter 139 and verse 7, we see God's presence is everywhere. His hands will guide us. He sees everything and is always with us. And so God's desire for us is for us to dwell in his presence. And he seeks that fellowship with man. In Psalms chapter 16 and verse 11, God's presence, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. He fills us with joy when he is there. His presence is not only filling us with joy, but as we look in Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1, he is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. And some some texts put it ever present help in times of difficulty. And so we are assured that the presence of God brings help. It brings strength. It's a place of refuge. The Lord is there. And in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, we are encouraged, so do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. The presence of God, the Lord is there. And so once God is there, we're encouraged not to be afraid, not to be dismayed. So we can have confidence when Jehovah Shammah is there. And so we come down to Isaiah 4, chapter 43 and verse 2. When the prophet spoke, um, spoke about going through the fire and going through the water, and God promises, to, um, he says, when you pass through the water, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not, be, will not set you ablaze. And so we are promised of this protection. When the Lord is there, we are promised protection. He's there to protect us. The Lord is there. So he's there to protect us according to Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. And when we look at Zephani Zephaniah and verse 3, um, chapter 3, verse 17, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior. So the Lord is there, the presence of God. He's a, a mighty warrior who saves. And so... We understand that Jehovah Shammah, the Lord, is there. He wars on our behalf. He's a God. He's the mighty man of war. His presence is ever there to fight for us. And we can be, we can be comforted. We can be confident that Jehovah Shammah, the Lord, is there. He's there to fight our battles. He's the mighty man of war. He's the God, the mighty warrior, according to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. And so when we look at Zechariah, we see the Lord, according to Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 3, that Sister Allen would have alluded to in her, her 
part of our teaching, we see that God, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, has promised restoration of divine peace among his people and a renewed sense of God's protection and guidance. And so we embark into the New Testament and we see a number of things happening there. Firstly, we see according to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 22 20 and 23, that God was with man in Christ. And we see also in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, that God is with man in his heart. And we see in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, that God will be with man in the millennium. And we also see that in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 3, that God will be with man, man with, will be with God in eternity. And so it's a blessed promise, the, pre the presence of God. The presence of God is not limited to this temple that Ezekiel saw in that vision, but it's available to all who would love and obey him through Jesus. And so this present reality was made possible by Jesus' birth, his death, and his resurrection. According to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 22 and 23, Jehovah took on flesh and dwelt physically among his people. And if we would read Matthew chapter 21, chapter 1, verse 22 and verse 23, it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so God took on flesh, and he was with man, according to Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. And so Jehovah Shammah is Jesus. And when we look at the text in John chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jehovah, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, teaches us to rely on God's presence with us. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we can experience the constant presence of God. The Lord is there with you and I. The importance of this storm, Jehovah Shammah, is that his presence brings comfort. And we know that we live in a world that is full of chaos and confusion. And there are many that so long for comfort. But I want to establish this evening that when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we can be assured that his presence is there with us. And his presence is not only there with us just to be there, but he brings comfort to our lives. He brings joy. He brings restoration. And so Jehovah Shammah, the Lord, is there. There are many benefits to his presence in our lives. And so no matter where we are in life, we can be assured that the presence of God is there. He will bring deliverance. He will be the fourth man in the fire. And when we look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 and 24, we notice that Jehovah Shammah was there when we, we, we saw the disciples crossing in this boat and there was this storm. And so Jesus was resting. And so they were terrified because this was this storm and Jesus was there sleeping or resting as we may put it. But he was there, he was able to calm the storm. And so what happened? We saw that his presence was there even with the disciples. So we can establish that even in the storms of life, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is who is there, his presence is able to calm every storm. And so no matter what the challenge is, his presence will go with us. His presence will be with us once we have surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And it is God's intention and it is his desire, it is his will that we 
be one, that we be saved, that we be transformed, that his presence dwell in us, that we be carriers of his presence, that, his, that, he be, that we can have fellowship, he can be there with us. And so when we look at Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, we see the presence of God, Jehovah Shama, is in our midst when we gather together. And we know that the scripture text that tells us very clearly that where the twos and the trees are gathered, he is in the midst to bless. He's in the midst of us. And so we are, we are being assured that his presence is there with us. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, is that when Jesus taught, he says, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Mm -hmm. We're assured of his presence with us. We can have confidence that our Lord is with us, Jehovah Shammah, he is with us. And so we are confident because the word of God is true. And God honors his word above his name. Once his words established that he's there with us, he is there with us. And so we can take comfort, we can take we can be encouraged that the Lord is with us. And so when we look at Acts, is that at chapter 17, verse 27 and verse 28, we find our true life when we connect with his presence every day. And connecting with his presence is something that we are called to do on a daily basis, moment by moment. Because when we come into that, into that relationship when we would have given our lives to Jesus. His presence has come to be in us by way of the Holy Spirit. And so our bodies become the temple of the living God. And the Spirit of God now lives in us. And according to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, is that it establishes that Jehovah Shammah dwells in the believers. We are the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. So we are not alone, but we carry the very presence of God. We have the very presence. Jehovah Shammah is right there in our hearts. And so currently, the Lord is present among, present among his people in the, the church through the Holy Spirit. God wants us to experience this presence every moment of every day. Jehovah Shammah is displayed in the church and we are his temple individually and as believers and the, and the collective church is also his dwelling place. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 and 17 tells us that we are the temple of the living God as God has said, I would live with them and walk among them, I will be their God, and they will be my people. So we see that God is there with us. And Hebrews chapter 13, or verse 5, also establishes that I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And so we want to encourage us. It doesn't matter what challenges you might have, what sir might be coming your way, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, the presence of God. He is there to calm every storm. He is there. He is there to walk with us, to be that footman in the fire. Whatever our needs are, our circumstances, God is there. The Lord Jehovah Shammah, he is there. If you are hurting, the Lord is there. When we are lonely, let us be reminded that the Lord is there. When we are tempted, the Lord is there. And he is not only there, but he is there to make a way of escape. He is there to give us the strength to overcome. He is there. To, to walk us through and to, to take us through every storm and every difficulty. When we are joyful and when we rejoice, he's there. 
with us. And so he's always there offering comfort, offering love, and his guidance and his strength to us. Even when we are weak, he makes us strong. When we are discouraged, he encourages us because his presence is there to do that. And so the Lord is there in our daily lives as believers so that we can know and trust that the Lord is here with us. He dwells with us. He walks with us. You and I are never alone. He has made us his dwelling place by the blood of Jesus and the infilling of his, the Holy Spirit. And so let us be encouraged. Look, we need to look to the author and finisher of our faith. And be confident that our eternal destiny is always to dwell in the presence of Jehovah Shammah, who is preparing a place for us. And when we talk about preparing a place for us, according to John chapter 14 and verse 3, when Jesus was talking about going and preparing a place for us, and he says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that's where you, where, that yeah, you yeah. also may be where I am. And so we can be confident that the confident that the presence of God, God always desire for us to be in his presence, for us to have fellowship. Yes. And at this point, Sister Roseanne has done a great, wonderful job in highlighting to you the various scriptures in the word of God mm -hmm. that tells you that you are not alone. You are never alone if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. You are never alone. He's there in any situation. And so now, as she said, in our eternal, in our eternal situation. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And where I am, and I will come again. He said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you would be all so where I am. And so I want to allude to a particular eternal situation right here where we are in our life, in this earth, living here. She has indicated so well that the Lord is with us in every situation. What now about our end life, but eternity? We know, oh yeah, that we are all bound for heaven. We sing that, we know that we are all bound for, for heaven, but we also know that the Lord said, I will come again. It says, they saw him leave. The, the, the disciples saw him leave, was taken up into a cloud in heaven. And the word came unto them, just as you see him leave, you would see him come again. You would see him come again, right here. And the scriptures also tell us that all those who are with him shall come with him again and inherit heart. And inherit heart. But inherit heart where? And he will be with us. He will be with us. And as I want to, I like the fact that Ezekiel's prophecy in, 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 in Ezekiel chapter 48, 48 35. 35 speaks to that, speaks to the eternal hope, speaks to a greater glory where the Lord himself, just as he leave, would come again and we would all dwell with him in a new life, in a glorious city. And that is the city that Ezekiel has seen, the Lord has shown him in, 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 a, in a vision. And he declared that that city would be called the Lord is there. And as we are about to conclude, I want, I want to talk about that city for a while. I want to talk about that city for a while. Time, right? Mm. 
I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven has passed away. I passed away. I, John, saw the holy city and New Jerusalem coming out of heaven. And, the, and Ezekiel saw that, saw that vision. He saw that new city. He saw the restoration of, of God restoring all things as he has promised since, it, since he has called Abraham. And the promise has not died. The promise is there. And there's a city. There's a place. There's a city, a eternal place in the earth that we believers would be with Christ and dwell there and live with him forevermore in his presence for all eternity, for all eternity. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And so God's, as God's people, we will enjoy close fellowship with God according to Revelation chapter 3 and verse Sorry, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 3. God's people will enjoy close fellowship with God, one that resembles the experience of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden before they fell into sin. And that's the promise of eternity. Mm -hmm. And so in concluding, we can establish that Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. One, he's there to comfort us in times of trouble. Secondly, is to remind us to be cautious when we're tempted to do wrong. Thirdly, for us to seek only his will when we're faced with challenges of the unknown. Fourthly, for us to be confident, mm -hmm. conscious, mm -hmm. and aware of his, that his presence finally, is in us yes, and yes. with us always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And finally. Glory to God. And finally. God's presence is always with us. He will walk beside us even when times are tough. Mm -hmm. as, as our sister alluded to, remember to look for him in your daily life. He's there waiting and ready to offer comfort and love God. And the love of God is forever in your life and he will be by your side. And remember, as I said, that eternity, you will dwell with him in a new heaven, a new earth, when all things has been restored as it were, as God promised. And we will dwell with him eternally and live in his presence. His glory is tangible. His glory is tangible, lively presence. And we will be there forever with him. Amen. And so we want to thank you for allowing us in your homes. And we trust that even as we would have thought that the word will cause a transformation to take place in the hearts of everyone that would have viewed this teaching, that the Lord will form our hearts and it continue to transform our minds and conform our will to his even as we come into this knowledge of his presence being with us Jehovah Shammah the Lord is there we pray God that you would continue to bless your people and that you would continue to cause them to grow in the fullness and in, in, in the fullness of stature and they would find favor both with you and with men and I pray, God, that your word, as it take root in, in every heart and in every life, that you would cause a great work of transformation to take place, that men and women will experience growth, and they, and they will experience you in a deeper way. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And so we bless you. We bless you. We bless you.